hello everybody thanks for tuning in uh, this is our first podcast of psa this is an initiative to introduce you to guys to uh, st joseph alumni who are pursuing for the studies in physics so as part of a po- first podcast we have uh, sanjita our alumnus who is studying in uh, uh, kalshwe institute of technology uh, she is doing it as a part of uh, the integrated phd program uh, offered by max planck institute uh, and she is on a full ride scholarship so we'll learn about what it's all about uh, welcome sanjita so it's great to have you here hi uh, it's a pleasure being here you know let's start with a general introduction uh, you know how was your studies back in B- bangalore how was joseph's and uh, how did you come across this program okay. yeah okay um okay so i studied at sjc and my program was pem which is physics mathematics and electronics um uh, and this was before nep so i did this three years um joseph was good actually um i had pretty much a very comprehensive like a uh, subject because i had a lot of physics a lot of math um that's just what i did in joseph how i came across this program was um so the american physics society holds a yearly like grad school fair it's virtual it happens online uh, and i signed up for it initially and that's where i came across max planck uh, but also max planck by themselves are a fairly popular institute if i think about it that's correct uh, but i actually came across their cognition program first they have a really cool cognition science program um but then i came across the photonics program and applied to the photonics program but that's that's the american physics society is how i first came across the program itself i see i see uh did you have a prior interest in photonics i mean why photonics and what got you interested in photonics um okay uh i think anyone who studies physics knows that there's so much you can do with it <laughs> and um among all the things i wanted to do i think a lot of those things aligned with photonics things like imaging and lasers um solar energy to actually a part of it um so yeah that's 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 how this whole thing started and also during my undergrad i did like a research internship um it had to do with terahertz radiation and it kind of also made my profile quite um good for a photonics program and that's how i cho- ended up choosing this program i see i see for the viewers that are uh, you know new to photonics could we just uh, you know give a brief about what photonics is what it's about photonics is the study of light it's basically a study of everything electromagnetic in nature you learn about production of light or how light is used today in the market um imaging spectroscopy lasers laser systems after electronic components it's basically anything with with light in it it's is photonics i see i see um so to start with so can you just uh, probably briefly explain what your program is uh, and how max planck institute comes in and why you are studying in kit right now can you just Uh, you know briefly right. introduce so so yeah. the max planck school of photonics has an integrated phd program it's a five year program um they allow you to finish your masters in the first two years and they give you three options you can study at kit you can also uh, choose to study instead at fau erlangen or fsu in vienna Uh, okay. you do two years of a masters program in photonics and then you transition to a phd where you can work at any of the numerous research partners of uh, the max planck school across the country um and that's also why i chose kit it's because of max planck because they have three uh, partner institutes and you kind of have to pick among like one of them uh the institute itself like during your study phase you you're not really in touch with max planck you're more with your university it's only during the research phase that you kind of join them and yeah they they fund the entire pro, like your entire study here in germany wow that's great i mean uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the funding like uh, how does the scholarship work and uh, a little bit uh, more 
what does it cover uh, what does it cover so um they i get a waive off on my tuition fees at kid okay. and all the fellows get like a monthly allowance so i get a monthly allowance okay okay that's great that's great so is it like uh, enough for you to uh, comfortably live there or do you have to do like a part time job or an internship oh no 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 it's it's more than you will require oh okay that's that's great okay yeah okay so um to talk talking a little bit about your study program so how was kit like uh, what do you study i mean how was the atmosphere in kit and how was your particular program uh so just a little about that um the city itself is extremely like student friendly we have a very international crowd here um so transitioning was actually quite easy uh kit is an institute of technology so you don't really find a lot of pure science courses but um it's i mean most of it is really a lot of like industry application um but yeah you you mostly have like technology courses going on um but you do have like a physics masters and stuff but only thing being um the only barrier to joining those would be that those programs are taught in german and not english so there are hmm. only very few like english taught courses at kit one of them being the optics and photonics program uh but they also I have see. like an electronics and like information technology english program but otherwise it is limited like your options to study at kit are limited but if you do join these programs then um the study environment is is super nice uh the programs are usually very well structured you have very good professors opportunities to do things on campus um my program itself is a two year masters um during the first year we basically study a lot of like the fundamentals of optics and photonics like it, so my study is like divided into four portions actually two your basics and advanced and on the basics you do physical and engineering optics and photonics and then in advanced you again do like basics and engineering optics and photonics and you cover a whole range of things like you start all the way with electromagnetics and the basic ray geometry like ray uh, optics that we used to do and then mm. you story transition into like nonlinear optics and quantum optics and things like that um there are also a lot of flex like, uh, actually there are a lot of courses you can take it's a very very diverse program uh, we have fa- we have five main specializations which you do in your second year you get to pick between like uh, solar energy optical systems biomedical photonics um spectroscopy and co- quantum optics or photonics and material devices um but basically before you graduate you would have studied everything and anything that has to do with photonics like in like i said you also have like a biomedical specialization hmm. um it's a, it's a it's a very diverse course but at the same time it's also pretty niche once you like pick your specialization you really study everything about it like you will graduate being very well versed in whatever you chose to study um I and see. the since it's an institute of technology and also like kit itself has really good like industry collaborations especially for optic students we have like really big companies like zeiss and uh, bosch and stuff who come for like um they they're partners in the sense that we can do our master's thesis with them and also it, you can eventually transition from there to work for them uh, they have some pretty great collaborations basically the atmosphere is it really pushes you to you know learn and grow and really really develop in whatever field it is that you pick to do okay that was a really really comprehensive answer um yeah uh, now that you mentioned that uh, there are very few courses in german uh did you learn any german i mean is there any requirement like for visa uh, other than for uh, the study program do you have to uh, do you require any german uh, requirement is there any study requirement uh no because my course is an english thought course i didn't have to learn any german for uh, the, any for the purposes of university application uh, so i didn't have to show any certificate claiming that i have like previous german knowledge however it is highly recommended that you learn the language because it will make living here and transitioning a lot lot easier um because like a, a huge portion of living here or just life here is built around the language 
and you you really need to understand it but then again i'm not saying you need to be really good at it but you need to know just enough to help you get through like small things you know everyday small things but no i didn't have to i didn't have to learn the language as such for the program itself i see okay oh well it's also uh, recommended that sorry i'm sorry to cut you uh, yeah, off but it's yeah. also recommended that you learn the language because it helps you with jobs later on because hmm. a lot of companies do prefer that you speak the language so you integrate better into their work culture makes sense that makes sense uh while you were talking about the study program at kit you mentioned that uh, you get to choose a specialization uh so like when during the course is it is it like during the first year when do you choose a specialization uh, do you have so to choose it during the application or do you get to experiment mm-hmm. everything you get to so like i said it's a four semester course you okay. spend the first two semesters studying everything okay um they let you pick a huge like variety of courses that you can do including labs actually you do a variety of labs uh and you pick your specialization in the third semester and you do okay. one one semester of your specialization itself and your like final fourth semester is when you write your master's thesis like the entire semester okay that's just pretty cool uh all right uh, for a student who is aspiring to get get a scholarship uh, not this particular scholarship uh, okay m- maybe you can touch up on that too uh, what are the application requirements and you know, what sh- what should a student uh, a bachelor student who wants to pursue uh, a masters in photonics so what are the uh, basic requirements and like how should he uh, develop his profile so what are the things he has to focus on um okay uh i can i can only talk about the program i applied to because i don't really know much about the other opportunities that are available i mean i know about the opportunities but i don't know the specifics of it um to give you the specifics of how the mpsp works is you apply to them they have an application online um i applied in my fifth semester which was basically the december before i graduated uh it's a fairly simple application um they don't really ask you for test scores like gre and stuff only an english language test uh and honestly josephites can get a write off on that because we study our undergrad in english like they're okay if you could just bring a letter from the university saying hey my uni- my course my entire undergraduate course was in english so you don't even really need an english language certificate um you fill an application and uh, so your marks play a huge huge role so you have to make sure you maintain good grades um it's also something that came up throughout my like application process it was when i was interacting with the people on the application um you know so there are other so like further down the line when i had like an interview and they did stress upon the importance of having good gpa so obviously first thing maintain those grades cuz they're very very important Uh, and that's that must like the one thing that stands out in your application the first thing you look at is your grades it's the bare minimum um so what's that, the benchmark what's the bare minimum uh for th- the grades that's the thing they they don't define a bare minimum but it's it's important it plays a huge role in how they look at your application they I don't see. define a cut off as such but you obviously want to be the best right because you have so many people applying to such a small cohort Yeah. Um after the application itself um they they screen you and they invite you to a second round which was the written exam um in the written exam there were like a bunch of questions from all over the place there was mathematics physics electronics computer science too um so in order to like get through that test you need to make sure your your foundation is solid so make sure you're paying attention to all your classes and actually studying cuz you really need that information on the test uh once you get through that test uh, the third round was actually an interview um there were like three people who said okay so we'll do like a quick presentation round so i had to present a work that uh, like something that i worked on during my undergrad um so that's another thing if you have to present something you must have worked on something so it's important hmm. that you do things outside academics that you can present um i don't know either you could like uh, approach a professor and start like something on your own or join some place that has open app like places that you can work with um for me that was iuac delhi and they i did like a summer fellowship with them 
um, and see. that's also the work I presented during the interview. So then they do a quick, int- you present your work and then they see how you do there. And then they decide if, if or if not, they want to give you that scholarship and that place in the Max Planck School. So it was like three layers, like three levels. Uh, again, if if you worked hard and done well in the three years of your undergrad, then you, it will be fairly smooth sailing. Um, so I would say keep get your basics right, keep those scores up, do some kind of work outside of college. And another thing would be like, it, it wouldn't make any sense to apply to a program just for the sake of it. Because hmm. it is going to be hard. It's going to require a lot of work. And it's not going to be easy to get through this if you are not even sure you want to do it. So make sure you really know what you want and make sure that photonics is what you really want to do as well. Because being motivated and having hope is just as important as, as having the knowledge to do it. Um, so first, like Got just it. figure out and make sure it's what you really want to do. And then the rest of it is really just technical stuff. I see. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so if a student, let's say a student has a very good profile, uh, he has an internship. So if he wants to apply for the fall of, I mean, fall of 2024, let's say. So he has to apply this year, 2023, uh, December, December, if I'm not wrong. So it's one year prior uh, to the semester, the intake semester. Correct? Yeah, you apply the previous fall or the previous winter, yeah. Previous winter. So what are the documents that one has to prepare for the application process? Okay, so the appli- So after my MPSP a- a application, I also had to file a, a new application for KIT itself. So there are actually two applications I had to do. And okay. both of them were slightly different. Um, so for Max Planck, it was mostly transcripts, uh, a statement of purpose, letters of recommendation. Um, yeah, I think, and the and like a write-off for the English language requirement. But those were like the major things you needed. And they also obviously ask you things like passport and stuff, but that's all just technical nitty-gritty things. Um, but for, for, and, and for KIT, there's a very similar thing. For KIT, I, I, KIT is actually fairly simple because it's really more of a formality. Because once you get into MPSP, your place at like one of those schools is for sure, but as a technicality, you still have to apply to that university itself. Um, and applying hmm. to KIT was also similar, like just fill an application, submit like LORs, your SOP, your transcripts and grades. But that's pretty much all you need. Nothing nothing that was too hard to get. Get done. Okay. Okay, that's great. Uh, can you uh, touch upon um, how a person should, should you know, uh, construct his SOP? So you said SOP and LOR uh, are the requirements for the program. So how important is it and uh, uh, like what should one focus on while writing the SOP? Okay, so the SOP is like um, the admission board's peek into who you really are as a person because everything else on your application is really just numbers. And the first time they get to know who you really are is through your SOP. So um, I'd say at least what I thought when I was writing my SOP was um, you need to give them good reason to have you there. And that good reason is basically motivation. Like they need to know that you're someone who will finish the course because you want it. Like it's important for you. Like the course is important to you for your own future. So show them that you have reason and motivation to be doing this course. Um, and secondly, you need to show them that you have the ability to do this course. So you need to show them that You've already showed them you have good grades and stuff, but now it's your time to tell them all the proactive, like how proactive you were during your undergraduation, like all the things you did outside of like academia itself. So put all those things down as well. Um, Try to give them a picture of who you really are and why you think you ought to be there. Um, Don't tell them how good they are because they already know. You got to show them how good you are as a person. But yeah, I think it already just comes down. To, yeah, just it it already comes down to just showing them that it's something you want. Like make them really believe that you want it. Like you want that place over there because it's important to you for your own future for whatever reasons you have. Because everyone's reason is different. But yeah, but in order to write that, you need to know for sure yourself first. Like so, have that talk with yourself. Figure out why you want to do it, and then it should be fairly easy to state why you want to be there and tell them why they, you think they should give you that place. 
I mean, if you have strong motivation, it's all about putting it on a paper. Exactly, because yes. that's what yeah. it is. It's a statement of purpose. You need to show them why you want to do it. Okay, that's great. Um, also, how much time did you take to write your statement of purpose? Like, how much time do you think a person should work on a statement of purpose? Mm, I think that really depends. Um, hmm. I can't. Now that I think about it, I don't remember how long I worked on it. It's a bit of hmm. a blur, but I think I worked a good half semester on it. Half semester, yeah. okay, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you knew you wanted this program well in advance. Well, when I was applying, to be honest, I also applied to other programs. Like you apply to other universities and programs that aren't necessarily the same. Hmm. But that's also another thing. When you're applying, you already know you have to keep your options open, and you yep. and you need to be just as motivated for every one of these options. So I'm not hmm. saying photonics was my only option, but you have to still make it seem like you're really. I mean, I was interested, but it wasn't my only option. So I still wrote SOPs where I wrote other things that weren't photonics. Okay, it's, okay. It's just all it is. It depends on the application. <laughs> Uh, it's good that you mentioned like uh, it also it means what you, by what you say it means that you have to tailor your sop for that particular uh, program that you're applying exactly. for exactly exactly okay. okay so uh, about your letter of recommendation so how many did you get and uh, who did you get it from i mean was it a uh, professor like was it a manager i had a lot actually i think i had like five letters of recommendation <laughs> Don't okay. ask me why I had so many, but uh, I ended up asking a lot of people just to be sure in the beginning because hmm. um, I was uncertain if they would uh, like write me the letter of recommendation, and luckily most of them agreed to write it. So in the end, I think I had about five letters of recommendation. I had one from each department, like uh, one from physics, okay. one from oh no, I had one from physics, two from math, and two from electronics. So I had five letters of recommendation from college. and i also had one more letter of recommendation from like my mentor who i worked with at iuac hmm. during the summer like research fellowship that's like six letters of recommendation okay that's a lot that's but you don't lot. need that many you don't you only need two or three depending on the university okay yeah. okay so uh, right now like for for a lot of people if even i am applying uh, abroad so a lot of rec- letter of recommendations teachers ask you to give a draft of the contents so yeah. were you asked to do the same and uh, what do you think should uh, be there in the letter of recommendation right since since you are applying i mean you know what best needs to come so can you just uh, give give a brief of what do you think has to be in the draft um okay so it's yeah they do ask you to give a draft yourself which is actually quite nice because you know where you're applying to and what this place expects of you so you can already write a letter of recommendation that really already fits you into that profile of students that they're looking for yeah. um you want to make it well again your lors are a very personal thing and what you put down really just comes down to what you think but try to make yourself fit into the fit in or be the kind of student that they're looking for that like the see. university is looking for yes because honestly not everyone is looking for the same kind of person as well like but it really depends like lor is a, especially writing your own draft for lor is a little bit of a gray area <laughs> but yeah again um, at least our teachers are fairly lenient in what you put into your draft so go ahead be as I don't know. Open as you want to be with that. With that. I see. Uh, so may I ask how long your SOP was? Like in words, how long should I it be? It was... uh, do you think what's the what's okay. the speed spot? What, what how many words mm. is ideal? Uh, I've come across applications where the university has specifically mentioned that they have a word limit, and some who don't have word limit. So you have to check your own application. um you know for the university you're applying to because sometimes they do have a limit they say you know don't exceed so many words but i think mine wasn't more than like a thousand words it was pretty short i tried to keep it fairly short yeah okay thousand words is short okay got it uh, it is short okay uh also you mentioned Again, about it depends. Yeah. yeah 
so it, it yeah, you can you can continue universe. okay like i okay. said it depends because there were there was one university i came across who said keep it under 1000 words and so i just ended up keeping it under 1000 words for all the other universities but some don't and you can exceed you can write up to 2000 words but obviously don't make it too long cuz even the even the admissions board is reading like so many applications and you Correct. really want to keep it concise you know just give them your motivation and just just, just give them the facts straight like like don't drag it out don't drag your sop or write nice things about yourself just get to the point just give them the facts they also know you're you're like a no bullshit person and you know what you're saying correct correct yeah okay uh you mentioned that uh, you did an in- internship uh can you elaborate a little bit on what it was about and how you got mm. that particular internship uh so the, so iuac is the inter university accelerator center it's in delhi and they run a yearly summer fellowship like a research fellowship they call it research internship or fellowship or something like that uh for undergraduate students across the country um they 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 have applications that open to like so the program runs in summer so their applications are also the previous winter i think november is their deadline um they have a fairly simple application on their website itself that you fill in and they shortlist students and if you're lucky you get in again even with are you are you itself um your marks are the one thing they look at like it's their most important criteria to recruit you is your marks i see okay that's great so did you do anything else except for this internship uh i mean what was your term paper about i mean did that any play any uh role in you getting mm-hmm. a scholarship I actually didn't mention my term paper at all anywhere in my uh thing because my term paper was kind of an extension of the summer project that I did itself. So it was okay. really just one thing and I didn't mention it again. But apart from the summer internship, I also did another astrophysics internship with this other organization called SSERD. Um okay. apart from that, I had I was a part of REAP, which is the program that runs at the planetarium in bangalore i did that for 3 years um, okay a lot of like college activities you know like psa and a backus and jet club peer mentoring all of those I things see. yeah okay that's great so and like it's... you can always do online courses and workshops as well like you can always mention those cuz even those are very good technical niche skills to have right right so like nptel and courser or edx stuff like that yeah things like that just courses yeah so by what you say it's like uh, it's it's very important to have like a well rounded profile uh yeah. with extra curriculars some uh, research internships and most importantly okay. gpa again you see it really depends like there was a lot of extra curriculars i did that i didn't mention anywhere in my application simply because i didn't think it was re- it was relevant to my program of study like because my program was like mostly physics or stem i don't know how important something like voluntary work that i did or or, or you know things along those lines were like i did a lot of like things in, in the humanities line like i used to debate and stuff i've been judges on events i've I was part of like this thing called the international public speaking uh, forum and stuff and like there was a bunch of other things that I did that I didn't mention because you have to see what to put and what to not put on your SOP as well like some of them are just not relevant like it would it would make no sense for them for me to tell them ha huh, I'm a good debater but like you, it might speak about you as a person but it doesn't add to your weight for the application itself really because they already at least with stem applications you just have to show them you have the technical skills needed to get through the program soft skills are always helpful but they really want you to have technical skills and experience i see uh so a little bit about your uh, uh, masters program right now uh so how is your uh, you know regular day like what do you do in a day like how hectic is it i mean is it hectic uh, so oh um it depends so time management is uh, very very crucial very important um at my university itself right now um at least this semester we have a four 
four four week a uh, four day week, which means I only have classes from Monday to Thursday. But I also do take some classes on Fridays. Like you are always allowed to take extra classes and stuff. Um, so in that sense, if you're not taking any extra classes, you really only have to do four um, days a week. And you, um, the schedule itself is not too hectic. But again, the course itself is a pretty niche course, and there's usually a lot of coursework that I have to do, like independent reading, and we have assignments every week that I have to turn in. Um, labs, for example, like. Every week when you do your lab, you have to like turn in a whole report about how your lab went, and yeah, there is a good amount of work that you will have to do. It's not going to be easy at all. But if you if you find that sweet spot with time management, then I think you'll be fairly okay. But yeah, you should be prepared to like for it to get pretty hectic, especially during like exam season and stuff. Because this is new. It's it's different from what we did in India. At least like the exam pattern here, like. Obviously, it's very, very different. It's so yeah. It'll be a new experience. It's a learning experience. But it might get hectic, but like I said, if you manage your time well, then it'll be fine. It's also like an added benefit that you only have to do like properly work for four days a week. Hmm. But yeah, it's it's okay. It's not too bad. I see. Okay. Uh, that uh, good that you mentioned that it's uh it's new. So I, that was uh, my next question. Oh, what do you see uh, that's a little different? Like, what's new in Ge- in the education system there in Germany? Uh, what are the differences? Like, uh, do you like it? And uh, what do you think are you know intelligent uh, in the in their education system? Right. Um, well, I can only compare it to like obviously the Joseph's program. I can't talk wholly on the education system in the country. Uh, mm. Just comparing, contrasting like Joseph's and KIT. Um, well, the way the lectures are taught are very similar. Your professors teach you off of PPTs. Um, they give you those PPTs later for you to study. Some of them also like give you textbooks and stuff. Um, so the teaching is still the same. Like the method of teaching is the same, but the quality of the content could be I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. Some are nice. You might not like some. So it's really a personal thing. But otherwise, the teaching method is the same. But what they expect you to do is is obviously a lot different. Like in Joseph's, you could almost get away with not doing anything throughout the semester and just studying for your end semester, and you can't do that here because some courses do take into account how you perform throughout the semester. Like like I said, you have weekly assignments that you have to submit, and some courses all of this adds up. Um, so in that way, there's a lot more work to do every semester, and this isn't work that's just Oh, I can read a textbook and I'll find the answer. It's more hmm. like, oh, I have to read a bunch of textbooks to understand it, so I can even start to solve the ex- exercise sheet that they've given me. So, you will learn to do a lot of independent thinking if you haven't already at Joseph's. And um, so, yeah, in that sense, it's a lot of you. It's going to be a lot of like individual effort. Like you'll be putting in a lot more work, a lot more learning. Um, and I think um, they're much more flexible with their like deadlines over here. Like they do, do they do have deadlines? But if you have legitimate reasons, I realize at least my professors are always willing to extend deadline. Um, so it it never gets too bad. Like they're all very understanding. The atmosphere is is obviously different from Joseph's because in Joseph's, I think we still had a bit of a school environment going on, but here it's more of a workspace environment. So you start treating your peers more like your colleagues and like. Work friends than as friends, um, things become a lot more formal um, in along those lines. But otherwise, yeah, it's it is different in some sense, but it'll be a good difference. Like, of course, it's going to be different. It's not going to be the same. But again, it's not it's not going to be a, like a hard difference. You you learn hmm. to enjoy it if if you like that kind of thing. I see. Uh, so how do you like? Other than uh, the education there, like other than your classes there, what do you find yourself doing during weekends? Uh, do you have? Uh, yeah. So, what are the other activities? Uh, so, uh, KIT in itself has like a whole bunch of like clubs that you can join. Like they have, oh my god, they're like endless associations that you can join, and there's they they have weekly activities going on and weekly meetups. So you'll always have like. A group of people to be around. I, for one, am part of this um, 
student organization called Oscar. It's basically a part of like um, like a worldwide network of student chapters who represent the Optical Society of America and the International Society for Optics and Photonics. And we kind of run like a branch for them here in the city. Yeah. And yeah, we have like every every week or every other week, we always have something going on, like a talk or a fun activity, some kind of gathering. But there's always a lot of things to do. Um, and I think like just with the culture here like people are very very like proactive in the weekends like if it's sunday then people at least what i saw with my own batchmates is sunday is not rest day every sunday would be oh let's go hiking let's go on a trail let's go for a walk let's go visit a different city there's always a lot you can do because everything's uh, very accessible here with like with regards to like transport and stuff so you'll have plenty to do if if you want to do something outside college i see Okay, that's great. So what do you plan to do uh, ahead, like after your master's, uh, like after your PhD in Max Planck Institute? Do you, have you decided on a, uh, in a specialization that you want to uh, choose? So what's the plan? So, uh, fair, fair. Good question. Um, no, because um, like I think, okay, I don't know, maybe it's just me and being undecided, but what I want to do changes uh, like every other month or two months because it's a learning process. Like every, like every other course you take can become an inspiration to you. Like you might take some random course in your semester that you suddenly fall in love with and you're like, Oh wait, I think this looks like this seems like a better thing for me to do. So no, I don't know what exactly I plan to be doing five years from now or even for my own specialization, because I have an entire year to take all the courses I want and decide what I like. So I'm going to give it the time. No, I still don't know what I want to do exactly. Nope. Okay, so uh, coming to the uh, you know kind of you are, you are telling that the teachers are really accessible uh, in at your university. Uh, so so are the teachers like you know professors or are they researchers? Like what which which step of their life are they in? Uh, yeah. Which um, yeah. Well, yes, they're all definitely uh, more active researchers than they are professors. Like. Being a professor is kind of like a second job for them. Their research careers are are, are, are like their main thing. Um, all of my professors uh, have their own research groups that they're heading and they have active research going on. And like they come to the university like a couple of hours a week to teach and stuff. But yeah, they're okay. all like very members who are very involved with like current day research. Okay, okay. Uh, so another... Uh, last few questions uh so if a student's uh if a student who is doing his bachelor's let's say is in first year and uh so after this podcast he feels that he's interested in photonics what do you think he has to do in the next three years mm-hmm. for him to be able to pursue have you have a career in photonics that's interesting i think a good place to start would be to see what's happening right now in the world with photonics like there are plenty of organizations or newsletters that are published every year or even monthly that are like photonics like websites of photonics newsletters and stuff obviously subscribe to all of those because then you'll realize what kind of work is happening right now um do extensive extensive research on what every country is doing with its own photonics uh, like research um you might see that some countries are investing better some are not figure out where the good research institutes are what kind of uh, research is going on there but yeah try to see yeah try to see what kind of research is going on where i think that's a good place to start and then see if you if that's something you'd be interested in being a part of like three years down the line when you graduate that's great but familiarize yourself with like current day research like photonics research okay okay that's great so like like i realize is it's a very um one-sided thing to say because I said that from the point of view of someone who's willing, who's still wishing to stay in academia. You might be someone who wants to transition to industry after your master's. 
and in that case look up where the big players like the where the big industry players in the you know in photonics are and see if if there are good universities in those countries or cities where they are based because usually like i said zeiss and bosch have like headquarters here not headquarters but they have offices here in karlsruhe and it's it's really easy for them to collaborate with the university and like draw students towards their company and also these students benefit from them being here because you get direct access to join them after you finish your studies so it also depends on what you want to do so if you if you're looking of transitioning to industry then you see what kind of industries are like on the top of the field you're looking for it doesn't have to be just optics and photonics whatever it is you want to do look at where the industry is the strongest and see what kind of universities are around these industries and what kind of programs they're providing okay that's great uh so another uh, question is uh okay what other courses did you apply for uh did you apply to any other country or was it only germany uh i did actually i applied to the us i applied to uk and i also applied to canada and they were all like physics programs just purely physics programs okay so what programs were they like were they related to photonics or No, no, they were just masters in physics. Like some of them were masters, some of them were integrated PhDs, but they were all physics, like just pure physics, nothing specialized. Okay, so are there any other scholarship opportunities that students can look out for and you know apply? Uh, because I'm sure there are a lot of scholarships that a lot of students are not aware of. Mm, well, I I think you can find good like. Uh, databases online to be honest there are plenty like for germany itself there's dad and they have like a whole list of scholarships that you can go through it is going to be work like but you have to be willing to put in the work like you can't say ah there are too many i don't want to go through all of them you have to there could be 200 you will have to go through all 200 of them to see which one you fit and which one you think that you can apply to and stuff but um i off the top of my head i can't tell you about scholarship opportunities but i can tell you that there's plenty of resources for you to look up and they're all online like and and like most scholarships that are being given out are definitely definitely published and uh, marketed online you will find them online and also like a lot of students do part time jobs right like even if they don't have a scholarship there's plenty of opportunities for people to work here also like i said you only have a four day week you still have two days of the week where you could actually do like a proper job hmm. and pretty easily sustain yourself okay uh that's great in the future where do you see photonics like uh how do you see photonics evolving uh are there any particular areas of uh, interest to you in photonics well photonics is a part of more sectors you can imagine like you might not realize it but pretty much everything stem has something to do with photonics and you'll always find a place somewhere for example like just off the top of my head thinking about the courses i'm doing there's you can go into the health sector because there's a lot of imaging research that's going on with like there's all this development in imaging techniques um there's lighting which is basically just inventing new sources of light like more efficient leds and or like better display systems like your like you know your computer monitors these are just very basic examples um there's there's communication you know with optical fibers and there's always this need for there's not a need but there's this constant push for faster internet with 5g and what not and all of that is also photonics work um then you have quantum optics which is fairly new but very interesting research going on there as well you have opto electronic components you know there's this big talk about using um photonic space chips in computers as opposed to the electronic ones we have now so there's a lot of research going on there and even otherwise there's so much happening with like laser production spectroscopy solar energy is another one that also comes under photonics um you also have nanotechnology like a good portion that overlaps with photonics when it comes to things like lithography and stuff mm. um so photonics isn't going to reach its like saturation point anytime soon it's just up to you to figure out what part of it you want to be a part of there's honestly a lot going on and will continue to keep going on Okay also there it's not just academia there's a, there's a lot of industrial application i mean there are more exactly. industrial applications by what you say 
<laughs> yeah, right. there is. Like I said, it, it's 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 a growing field in both sectors, both academia and industry, because because there's so much academia research that's going on. We still need someone who implements all of this, right? So there's also a growing industry sector for all the research that's being produced. So there's plenty of opportunities. Okay, that's cool. That's great. Um, all right, Sanjita, that was uh, really really. a great conversation uh, we'll probably have you again if there are any more questions uh, i'd actually like people asking a few questions but uh, unfortunately this is not a live podcast so maybe if there are more questions we can you can maybe answer them uh, yeah yeah you can yes. always redirect them to me you can give them my mail yeah sure i'd be so happy if, to answer uh, cool okay that's great so if anybody wants to contact sanjita we'll uh, we can probably uh, you know text Uh, the PSA Instagram, and uh, you guys can get in touch with her. And also, like you ask people to subscribe to all of those, uh, you know, uh, tech uh, uh, newsletters. Uh, why don't you ask them to subscribe to PSA's YouTube channel? Yes, you guys support what they're doing. It's such a great initiative. I think a lot of people will benefit from it. It's something that was that's definitely needed. I think it's always good for students to know what their alumni are doing because it gives them like a direction to head towards. So um definitely great initiative and I'm very very happy you, thank you, you chose to have me over it was a pleasure being here Yes thanks a lot Sanjita it was it was lovely to have you Thank you guys thank you for uh, you know uh, joining us uh, we'll have more podcasts and uh, more conversations uh, coming your way uh, so this podcast will be available in audio format in Spotify uh, please check us out uh, there too thanks a lot for tuning in